All right, good evening. Um, uh, welcome to the very last session of today. It's uh, uh, the V Brown Bag Tech Talks. Um, I'll be giving a presentation on Site Recovery Manager and uh, what I like to do is uh, how to test, bubble test in the real world, all right? Um, just a quick agenda. Uh, I'm gonna go over the importance of uh, uh, creating a test plan and uh, using a testing. Uh, and then some of the challenges that you may be faced with. Uh, then we'll go over the methods uh, of different test plans and scenarios and the benefits of each one. Uh, and then I'll kind of talk a little bit about designing a, a testing um, er, you know, area for how to do a bubble test and then uh, talking specifically to uh, private networks. Now, a um, little bit about me. Uh, my name is Mike Ellis. I'm a senior systems engineer for Round Tower. Um, I am a V expert uh, five years in a row. A uh, couple VMware certifications. I have more, but didn't want to list all of them. It'd be a slide full. Uh, EMC elect, Cisco champion. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I am at V2Mike. Uh, and my website is, uh, my blog is V2Mike.com. All right, so the importance. Uh, just a couple bullet points of why do you need to test your SRM recovery plans, right? So a lot of the biggest reasons are audit, right? So you have compliance, audit concerns, uh, reasons to you know, take a snapshot or a screenshot of, of a failed over environment um, so that you can prove to uh, compliance um, people that you know, it, it did actually work, right? Uh, investment, right? We make this huge investment in being able to replicate and automate our failover, but now you actually want to show that that investment you know, went somewhere, that it actually did something. Uh, and then availability, right? So, I mean, we test because we want to make sure that uh, our applications are going to be available. So you want to make sure that they actually do work. And this isn't a, uh, you know, fancy, crazy wrap thing, right? But you want to make sure that it works. Like, that's the most important reason why you test. Um, and you don't want to lose your job or bring your applications down. So there's a resume generating event. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the challenge, right? So this may be where you are today, right? So you have Site Recovery Manager installed. Um, I'm not going to go into 101 type things, but um, you have Site Recovery Manager installed. You have some sort of replication, whether it's array-based or vSphere replication. Um, and then you have a recovery network um, available, whether it's uh, configured by your network admins or whether you uh, kind of just have that already set up and mapped. Um, and you have a test plan, right? So you know what applications you want to test. You know how you're going to test them. You actually have a, a plan to do all of that, right? Uh, and you know which applications you're going to uh, be testing, whether they're you know, all your production app, apps or just a single SharePoint website or whatever that may be. Um, and again, the challenge may be that um, a, a lot of times in some of the customers that I've worked with, right, uh, availability of your applications is 24-7, 365. So I've done, um, uh, for a customer that uh, had to, uh, you know, they, were ga uh, they ran gas stations, right? So, uh, and it was their payment credit card industry um, uh, system. So they couldn't actually, um, being a gas station that never closed, right, so they had to make sure that they were always available and they couldn't test their recovery plan or in a live failover mode. So what we needed to do was uh, make that uh, test as close to a production failover as possible. Um, and the worst thing is when you do run a bubble test and you still can't get your critical application to work, right? So you get this big error message. Uh, methods, right? So this is a, a little bit of SRM basics 101, right? So you have test mode. And in test mode, uh, that's specifically where you configure your recovery network. Okay, so um, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about the, des uh, the test modes, but uh, then you also have your failover and failback, right? Now you can do a plan migration, uh, which most times I use a plan migration because um, I want to make sure that I can roll back if, it, if certain parts fail. Um, and then there's a disaster recovery mode, which is my data center's offline, and I need to force the recovery even if it 
uh, doesn't work. Um, the different test modes of Site Recovery Manager, right? So um, I usually like to uh, talk about these three, right? So you have Auto Isolated, which is the default um, test mode, or sorry, the recovery mode, or recovery network in SRM. Um, and then what I like to call a private VLAN test mode. Now, um, I'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like. Uh, it's not necessarily PVLANs in, in some aspects, but it's a, an isolated private network using VLANs. Um, and then uh, the last one is a live failover. Now, some people may argue, well, that's you know, a planned migration or a, or a failover, right? But in a lot of aspects, that's how you test your disaster recovery. So if you have a weekend, right, where you have uh, no business operations running, schedule a maintenance window, and you actually take down those production servers uh, and test them in a failover and failback mode. All right, now, uh, I'm going to go over the benefits of each one of these, right? So the first one is uh, the auto-isolated mode. Now, this is the SRM default, okay? And there are some benefits to it, right? So replication. You're testing to make sure that replication is working and uh, that there's no issues with permissions or, you know, whatever. For example, recover point, you want to make sure that you have that group policy set to use SRM. Uh, the other thing that auto-isolated tests is the OS consistency, right? So you want to make sure that as you have a hard shutdown that your OS is replicated properly and it can power on. Uh, another side note here, um, I've seen where uh, Windows updates um, are pending on a server and pulling the plug on it actually causes the server to not boot up the next time. So this is a, a great example of why you would do a bubble test. Um, single instant apps, right? So you can test an app that doesn't rely on anything else externally, okay? Um, a lot of people kind of, you can go into, um, you know, putting a couple VMs on the same host because there's no uplink, right? But, you know, that's not necessarily, you can't rely on putting all your VMs in one host and making that work. But you can test a couple single instant applications. Um, you can also test some scripts, right? So um, if you have some sort of a IIS web server and you want to do some uh, changes to the host header in, in the application and make sure that it's working, and then it comes up and it's uh, responding and working off of that new IP address if you were to change the IP. What it doesn't test, right? So you can't test AD and DNS, right? Because that, those services are outside of your network or outside of that auto-isolated network. You can't do complex multi-instance, multi-networked you know, um, networked applications, right? So if you have a SharePoint site that relies on AD and DNS, and it relies on a database server, web server, app server uh, that are in different networks. You won't be able to reach those networks, okay? Uh, load balancers, we don't typically see that tested in auto-isolated mode. Uh, SRM itself, right? Uh, when I say SRM, there are a couple components around that. We'll get into that. Uh, and firewall, right? So you can't go through your firewall. You can't get out from your firewall. So these are things that are kind of limited by an auto-isolated test mode. Now, private VLAN, uh, same thing. You can test the same uh, you know, replication, OS consistency, right? Um, but you can test AD and DNS, and I'm going to show you how and, and, and how you do that, right? Um, you can uh, test your complex apps because you'll have a private VLAN between, you know, you know say, a couple different networks, and you'll be able to uh, have them communicate through uh, that isolated network. Uh, some things that can't be tested, right? SRM itself, some of the timeout settings that may uh, need to be set or tweaked. Um, you know, the actual powering down VMs at one site and making sure that that uh, is graceful and that that works or that it happens correctly, right? So there are some things that you can't test, like SRM. Again, load balancers. Uh, the one thing I, I have seen customers do is um, I've seen them use their DR site, Load Balancer, and move those uh, uplinks and networks into their auto-isolated because they're, you know, they're not, they don't really rely on anything else. They can update it, kind of mock, uh, deploy it, or maybe it's a virtual client. Um, 
The other one is a firewall. Again, you can't test that or internet because then your application may be able to get out and make changes or whatever, right? Now, and the last one is live failover. So do the same things as before, replication, OS consistency, AAD, DNS. Um, but in a live failover mode where you actually fail over your VMs, right, you can tweak things like your SRM timeout values. You can make sure that SRM has all the permissions on the storage array to, you know, demask the lungs and uh, that you have enough resources in your site to uh, fail everything over and, and, and do all of the actual production changes. Uh, load balancers, right, so that would test, you can test load balancers coming in, uh, VIPs and all that, uh, as well as since you're actually failing over your applications, you may want to make sure your firewall rules are, are set up properly and that you can get out to the internet. All right. So, designing an IP VLAN scheme, right? So this is kind of, we're going to go over a couple basics here, right? So you have your protected site and your recovery site, and you may have, uh, you know, some, there's some basic VLAN configurations that, that you may use. Um, I prefer the KISS method, right? So let's not overcomplicate, some, overcomplicate something. Make it easy to use, easy to remember. So you know, you have 10.1, right, where one is your site ID or whatever, uh, and the third octet, uh, 10.1 or 10. I'm sorry, 10.1.1, 10.1.2. That is your, um, you know, your application grouping or or you put all of those together. Now, if you notice, I listed um, AD and DNS in its own VLAN, right? I don't know how yours may be set up, but I'm just kind of outlining that it's there. Uh, you have your web tier, app tier, that's a you know, kind of typical scenario that you may find. And then at your recovery site, so make it easy. Change it, the second octet to two, where you're um, still maintaining where the VMs fail over to. Um, but I also like to make sure that these um, three VLANs at the bottom, the web, app, and DB tier, are empty. Uh, you don't want a VM that lives um, over it at one site to fail over on top of another VM at your other site. So I usually like to make sure that those, um, those VLANs match up and that they um, are the same size and, and they have the same uh, characteristics and all that. What you should not do is uh, fail over your AD and DNS server, okay? Let Microsoft Active Directory, let DNS uh, be resilient and have that at both sites, right? So you don't want your app uh, to be uh, pointing to the same DNS server that's at your uh, failed oversight. You know that's why you have a primary and secondary. You know you have you may want to use one uh, IP address at your primary site, and then your secondary is uh, the DNS server for your secondary DR site. All right. Um, for the private VLAN, okay. Now, real quick. So for the SRM, you have uh, your recovery site and you have a live failover. So you'll have your 10.2.1 uh, and all that, and that's where your VMs are gonna move into. And with SRM, again, one of the limitations is you can't change the IP address uh, mapping or uh, the way it customizes itself. So you can't create a you know, 10.3 address uh, to where your VMs fail over to. So uh, that's why your, your actual you know, gateways and your IP addresses have to overlap um, what that means is you need to change your uh, VLAN IDs. So uh, in my example, you're using uh, the 2000 range for all of your live failover um, IPs, right? So that's where everything would fail over to in an actual failover mode. Uh, but in a private VLAN, uh, they still fail over with the same IP addresses because you can't customize that. But the port group that you assign them to is in a 3000 VLAN where there's no gateway that goes outside to the internet. Um, you're able to route in between the 3001, 3002, 3003, uh, but you have that copy there that you can have. Um, so what works in this situation, right? So NSX, how you create a private VLAN is, uh, is up to you, right? Um, IP address changes is, uh, is complex, right? You have to update DNS. NSX uh, does have uh, the ability to fail over 
uh, and keep the same IP addresses, right? So that's something new. But if you don't have NSX installed and you don't have a license for it, it's an additional license, an additional cost, and uh, it may be something that you're just not ready for yet. Uh, VRF contacts, right? So this is the primary way that most companies set up a, a different routing method. Uh, the only problem with VRF is, um, for example, in Cisco switches, you have to have the IP services uh, license enabled. Um, and a lot of customers, they just don't have that. They just have typical layer three routing and they don't have the ability to have multiple VRF contacts, okay? Um, the way I get around that is by my third example, which is a, a VM appliance of some kind. Uh, the one that I use the most is uh, called Halon SR, or Halon Security Router. It's actually a, uh, a free license uh, to use a certain level of their uh, software, and it does basic things like routing in between. You can have like a couple VPN sessions, but there's other ones out there, right? So I have uh, a couple of them listed there, and then if you want to copy this link, you can, uh, but that's just to the, uh, uh, the VMware Solution Exchange where you can download those, mark, uh, those appliances. Um, what's great about this kind of appliance is it doesn't require um, a whole lot from your networking team, okay? Um, you just tell your network guy, hey, allow these VLANs on these particular uplinks. You don't have to give, your network guy doesn't need to create a default gateway for them because your appliance is gonna be the default gateway. Uh, for example, you would create this appliance, a Halon SR or one of the other uh, listed here, whichever you wanna use, and you give that VM uh, three uplinks or four uplinks, however many VLANs you have, and you give it a default gateway and IP address on each of those uplinks, right? And what you do by, and what that creates is it creates the routing is all contained inside of that VM and inside of those networks. So I'm gonna go back to this slide back here. And so your dot one for 10.2.1 uh, exists in the 3001 and it's on this virtual appliance. Uh, the 10.2.2.1 is on this virtual appliance. So you can route in between them, but none of the traffic leaves your network. Uh, your network guy doesn't freak out because he's like, oh hey, there's overlapping IPs and I don't, know what that's going to do, right? It's just a, a VLAN that he allows, and he doesn't really have to see any of the traffic or uh, put a, a default gateway on there, right? Um, moving forward. So now I'm just going to challenge you, right? Go do it. Go try it. Um, if you're struggling uh, you know, to create this isolated network, I've got um, a lot of examples out there that I've used. Um, I'm more than willing to uh, kind of help out with that. but. Set up your private VLAN network. You know, not a PVLAN, right? But a private VLAN network where you can use it with, um, uh, within a uh, SRM bubble test. Um, another couple just tips. Uh, clone your domain controller, right? Don't move your DR domain controller into this and then move it back. Uh, it may mess up your DNS entries or whatever else, replication. But I usually clone the domain controller. Another tip, um, use a desktop as a VM for testing, right? You can leave it over there. Uh, just have a, or fail it over if you like, but have a Windows 8, Windows 10 VM uh, just sitting there that you can console into and uh, open up SharePoint or log into a server or open a web page. Um, maybe it has all of your DR plans on that box. Um, and then also, you know, work with a, a partner uh, who has experience with SRM. Again, a shameless plug for Round Tower, which is a company that I work for. Um, but again, you can uh, work with a partner that, that has uh, done this for other customers, right? Um, and use their knowledge. Uh, go through the community to find uh, somebody who can help you do this, whether it's a paid engagement or something like that. Um, but doing all the things, you're the man. So just enjoy uh, bubble testing with SRM. And that's all. So I just want to thank you guys all for your time. I know it is uh, 15 after, but uh, uh, the solutions exchange for those uh, here at VMworld, the uh, hall crawl is tonight. So uh, go out, check out some vendors, and, and have a great evening. Thank you.